Now a few months ago I made a video about these two islands, which are the Helgoland Islands. Now these are German and they are actually like 100 nautical miles from mainland Germany. Yeah, around that. And such an island is only accessible by boat or by plane. And well, when I mean plane, I mean more like very small plane. <laughs> I look at these very small runways. I think this airport actually has the shortest runways, at least in Europe, or at least one of the shortest. Yeah, that was a very interesting video. Now, yes, that airport is on one of the two islands. The other island has actual houses, a little bit of a small town on it, and a helipad, but no airport. But to be honest, there is some leftover space on here isn't it? This could genuinely serve as a runway. You know, in the case of an emergency, could you land your plane here? Let's find that out today. I mean, it would most obviously smarter to just go to the airport here. Actually, the length of the runway is just as long as this grass area anyway, so yeah. But you know what? Let's do it anyway. All right, so we are spawned in on our unofficial grass runway on the island on this ultralight aircraft. Uh, let's see if we can take off. I don't doubt that. All right, full power and no problem at all. I mean, most obviously, and landing should also not be a problem. But what we can already see is that this is quite a little bit of a slopey grass area, isn't it? There's quite a few bumps. Oh my goodness. All right, we have crashed. But yeah, there's quite a few bumps. Landing gear of a plane will definitely struggle to maintain its live on this small grass area. But yeah, this will be pretty interesting. Now the ultralight obviously worked out. I mean, this doesn't need a runway at all. You can technically start it on a helipad. Let's try somewhat of a more airplane-y aircraft. That is the X-Cub. I was actually able to stop this plane at any place really. By the way, the grass area is around 300 meters long which is shorter than any runway, really. I'm pretty sure that even the big airliners will be able to stop here. Or they won't. Probably not, yeah. Now let's just go ahead and land this X-Cub. We have to be very careful. I mean, even though this plane was built for grass areas like this, as you can see, it has very tough landing gear, very thick tires. We still don't want to tip over, which I always do in these tail draggers. So let's be careful this time around. All right, there we go. And the plane is still in a functional state, which is very nice. And the engine has stopped now. That's interesting. You know what? This was not too bad. I mean, we did bounce a couple of times. Yeah, I still don't know how to land this plane properly, but this time around we didn't crash at least, and any landing that you can walk away from is a good landing. But I can already see that this bumpy surface will definitely become a problem. I mean, it already is. Let's move on to a conventional general aviation plane. Something like the Cirrus SR-22. Let's land this one here. All right, let's do this. I mean, the Cirrus SR-22 is definitely not a bush aircraft. You shouldn't even operate this on grass runways. Oh my god. Oh, we have crashed. Yeah, see, that's the problem here. Oh, no, we're falling down. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, there we go. Falling off the cliff as well. That might have not been very successful. I mean, in the case of an emergency, you would, well, pull the parachute anyway, so who cares? Oh, that was really not good. Yeah, how should we move on then? Try something like the Cirrus Vision Jet. The good thing about the Cirrus Vision Jet is that there is no prop in front of the aircraft that can be damaged by hitting the ground. So chances are better of surviving. All right, so for the sake of this video, let's actually initiate a bird strike as well. Oh my goodness. Birds, we have now lost the engine. The thing is our speed is way too low to maintain flight. All right, this plane does have a fire extinguisher, which is nice. There we go. But the engine is now completely turned off, so we must land on the grass area. And here we are. Ah, I mean, you know, we stopped, so that kind of does count, doesn't it? All right, here's the landing. The nose landing gear is going to be pretty much gone. Yeah, the bumpiness of this grass area is really becoming a problem, especially the bigger the plane gets. But also, in this case, you would have just pulled the parachute in the case of a bird strike. But yeah. Now let's try the infamous Pilatus PC-24. Yes, we're actually talking jets now. The thing about this plane is that it has some very versatile capabilities. You know, you can land this plane on grass, which is very exceptional for jets. Can it also land on this short grass strip of an island that is also so completely bumpy. In real life, maybe not. But let's see if it can in the simulator. All right, welcome aboard. Someone needs to get that windshield cleaned. Oh, now we forgot about the emergency thing. All right, there you go. All engines are now turned off. I think that was not a good idea. Now we don't have any reverse thrusters. 
Oh, turning sideways. Oh, wow. Okay. Haven't I broken all airplanes in this video so far? I, I think I have. Yeah, I mean, what can you do? Uh, yeah, that was not good. There we go. I don't know if that would have been a fatal crash, but just maybe. Yeah, I've had better landings. Yeah, maybe a plane that does never disappoint me. The Twin Otter. Yes. I'm starting to use this plane in every video, am I not? The thing about this plane is that it can land everywhere. It handles everything you throw at it, pretty much. And that's pretty nice. So let's see if it survives a landing like this. Honestly, I think our chances are looking pretty good. Let's actually keep the engines running now, just so that we have the reverse thrusters going as well, which we do need for landing, especially these bigger planes. Otherwise, we'll just die. Alright, the the good thing about this plane is that it can fly at very low speeds, running at around 75 knots. That is below the speed of the plane that I fly in real life, actually, which is crazy. All right, let's just go ahead and land. Oof, that was really not a comfortable landing, but we have stopped and the engines are actually still running, which is nice. This grass field is probably hell for all airplanes, really. This time around, we have stopped, and I'm pretty sure that we're even able to take off again, which we are. Yeah, this plane is super versatile. Yeah, so far, I've come to the conclusion that if you have to land at this island, it's probably safer to ditch the plane into the water, isn't it? Right, maybe it isn't. Right, that was not very good, was it? Now, we can obviously try something like an airliner now. I mean, the Twin Otter is already an airliner. Let's try something like a jet airliner now, like the 737. All right, so for the first time around, we'll land without landing gear in order to stop more quickly, which might sound a little weird. All I can say is that this is gonna be a pretty tough landing, quite a firm one, but firm landings are quite usual for the 737, I guess. Ooh, all right, yeah, that was expected. We have actually stopped quite safely, actually. All right, I think we broke the plane apart on the impact, which is unfortunate, quite safely, actually. But it was still not that much of a very fatal landing, was it? Ooh, yeah, never mind. One part of the plane is in the ocean now. That's not good. Safely. But the main part of the plane has stopped. It was actually not that bad, was it? I mean, what can I say? We can try something like the 767 or something. All right, here we are on board the 767. Let's again go without landing gear, because who needs that? Oh, town. Town ahead. City ahead. Oh my goodness. Church. Ah. All right, going around. You know, you can always go around. Yeah, maybe this is not the most suitable place for uh, for a landing, is it? That was actually quite an impressive go around, wasn't it? That's interesting. How the plane just didn't want to touch down. That's why it never really stopped. There we go, right into the church. There we go. You know what? Let's try playing like the Dash 8 as well. Because I want to see how the turboprops react to hitting the ground. All right. There we go. Approaching the island. Obviously without landing gear again. Oh my goodness. Oh, a crash again. But maybe we can stop, which we have actually. You know, just again, we didn't really safely land the plane. But maybe this was not a fatal crash. If there were people on board, I think most of them would have survived. Not too bad. All right, 747, let's do this. We are getting to the point where really the plane is bigger than the whole town, really. Oh, all right, one house is gone, but we have stopped now, so. I mean, it could have gone worse, right? Okay, there are some weird houses here too, but other than that, the plane is totally fine, and the engines are still running, aren't they? Yeah, no worries, you can uh, still depart out of here. Ooh, yeah, all right. And again, we have broken the plane apart in two halves. Yeah, but in real life, I think the plane would have fallen apart in at least two parts. I mean, look at that landing, ouch. One part would definitely be in the water. Okay, maybe this was not that much of a survivable landing, but who cares, I guess? That was still fine enough. Yeah, all in all, we can say that the, well, airport capabilities of this small island are not very satisfying, are they? Oh, wow. Oh, water. Jesus Christ. Even the Challenger 300 fails to operate here. That was my phone. Yeah, the thing is, the actual airport of these islands has pretty much the same issue. <laughs> Only the smallest of the smallest airplanes can fly here. They also have to be very tough. Really, I've tried landing many planes here and it was never possible to go bigger than something like the Twin Otter. But a jet has obviously no chance here. All right, let me just demonstrate that with the 737 here. I mean, we can try landing without landing gear too. That'll help us stop. All right, there we go. That was a touchdown. Let's see if we can land in time. Ooh. 
wow, that is closer than I wanted it to be. But yeah, the person standing here is still alive. That's nice. But Jesus Christ, check out this landing. So yeah, American, there you have it. You can operate your 737s here. Probably not very efficient, though. Ouch. I mean, that was probably a very survivable landing still. But uh, yeah, guys, today we learned that the islands of Helgoland are really only accessible by very small planes or just by boat. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night. Also, subscribe.